my next guests have broken the internet because they were doing what is called a sex positive podcast and everybody just kind of lost their minds. I'm so excited to welcome back. No, they've never been, none of you have been, ever been on the show. Yeah, yeah, it's okay, Larry. If that's the way you do on the trend, you just wait for guys to break the internet and then you invite Sawa. This yeah. is internet breaking but, territory uh, right here. <laughs> You're sitting on <laughs> Kaz and Nini. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. You do a podcast called The Spread. Mm -hmm. Uh, ironically, none of you guys are spreading right now. You know there's a whole man, man spreading epidemic in, <laughs> in public transport especially? Man spreading yeah, epidemic. Yeah, people who sit like this. Well, and then, you, uh, then you don't have space. Imagine in a mat, then somebody sit, sitting like this. Yeah, then because what, the ball suddenly grew bigger? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have to ask, right? Yeah. <laughs> like what's going on? It's just like <laughs> some men like a bit more space than others. Uh, they have been also in parts of the, in, of the world, like in New York, they had to do campaigns to say, please be mindful of your neighbor. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So that was not the inspiration behind your podcast. No, no, no. no. Yes, no. We're not right. that shallow. You called it a sex-positive podcast. What does that even mean? Well, um, sex positivity, I guess the reason that the word itself became popular is because of how sex is viewed by a lot of people in the, around the world, but specifically here in Kenya for us. Um, it's just you know, the conversations surrounding sex or sexuality are really, um, like, s scrutinized, if that's the word, and mm -hmm. just um, shied upon, and just because of the way, the society that we grew up in that is conservative. Yes. yes conservative. Conservative in quotes. Yes. It's not really conservative. No, no. we're just, just we're conservative, so people know that we're conservative. We just need to show people that we're conservative, yeah. but we all know that, like, after Sunday, or before Sunday, you know, okay. before, like, everybody has their lives that they live in, so. All right. I mean, that's besides the point, but the idea is so that we can form a positive space where people can talk about sex, sex sexual health, um, sexuality and just um, be able to, to, to turn this what was once viewed as a negative thing into like a positive space and just to I mean it's a beautiful thing that people right. can enjoy you know? yeah. Nini. there's a lot of education for me the reason that I I got in I got into um, the spread was because there was a lot of stuff there was the rate of HIV infection which meant something for me um, that was just getting higher and higher with teenagers and I'm raising a teenager right now. There was panic conversations that I was seeing on WhatsApp from parents in the, sc in the, schools, in the school that my daughter was in after stuff like Project X, you mm -hmm. know. There was a panic around sex, which meant that there there's a lack of understanding because if you think about it, Larry, have you ever been in a scary sex <laughs> conversation, <laughs> sex position in a scary right. so scary that you panic it's like world war three is about to break out mm -hmm. so for me it was about what is what are, what is the fear around our kids understanding that yes they are sexual beings and yes they are going to start feeling these desires and how can i change it because my daughter knows that this is not wrong your sexual your desire is yes my daughter is 15 years old sexual desire is not wrong what you have to do as a parent is kind of you okay. know help it tame it give her time to grow up explain to her why she's giving herself time but you can't stop it you can't restrict it it never works and for me a sex positive show was about those conversations because parents can't have them imagine you can play a bit of our show and you start a conversation from right there mm -hmm. with your kid you covered different topics one of them was episode three was on sexual rights for instance mm -hmm. it's not a conversation you, you've seen in, in in broadcast media before or in any form of media at all yeah, that's right. So, um, and the thing is, because when we first launched our show in April, there was a whole hula baloo with bloggers talking about what it wasn't. Yes. Um, there was a big uproar as soon as we launched. So, um, we also wanted to understand what the laws were regarding us putting up a sex positive podcast. So, we invited um, a human rights lawyer, Eric Guitari, onto our show to mm -hmm. explain to us. Um, just what people's rights were regarding sexuality mm -hmm. and what was legal and what wasn't legal and just people's jur jurisdictions yeah and out of that it became very controversial more recently the CEO of the Kenya Film Classification Board Ezekiel Mutua said there was investigations to find out if this was a lesbian show and in fact he's quoted as having said it's hosted show. by two known lesbians mm -hmm. what is your reaction to that I mean I said nice because I I liked the publicity I mean you can say what you want to say. The truth is on the internet, right? Yeah. You can call it what you want to call it from a point of ignorance. The funny thing is I had called the blogger who wrote that article in April and I said, okay, so I've been waiting. See, now you write the proper article mm -hmm. about what the show actually is about. We have 13 episodes up. Right. I sent them all to him. I sent them to Ken TV. I said, why don't you write a follow-up? Oh, oh, 
we mistook or misunderstood it, and now this is what this show is about. Yes. And then Ezekiel Mutua came out and said that whole, you know, I'm a lesbian, we're yeah, lesbians, we are doing a lesbian show. But for me it was about, you, he drew attention to the show. He spoke from a very ignorant place, because if the show has been running since April, all the episodes were there. He said he was doing investigations. Yes. You cannot do an investigation without a phone call. Mm -hmm. I have not been spoken to by anyone from Ezekiel Mutua's office. Nor have, have you I. been spoken to no. by? I mean, he so did not speak to any of us. What investigation was being was done going on. when actually what really needed to be done was you go onto SoundCloud and press, press play. play. That's all the investigation <laughs> you need to do. It doesn't take a genius. And it's investigated. Right. It doesn't yes. take a genius. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So. The conversations are a bit more risque than what you ordinarily find. You you were talking in one of the episodes about doing these um, Kegel exercises, mm -hmm. and you may not m perhaps hear about these every day on, on, on national media, mm -hmm. media that reaches a wide a wide number of people. I'm doing them right now. <laughs> but sorry, what's the question? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to know about the Kegel exercises? Would you like me to explain that? No, 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 no. That's not really what I'm asking <laughs> about. I'm talking about the chest of topics yeah. are a bit more risque than what you'd find on national media. Oh, wow. Well, that's only because you, national media you, doesn't yes. allow you to have yeah. certain conversations because you're limited to, as a broadcasting organization, yes. you're limited to what you can talk about. Yeah. And that's the beauty in having a podcast is that the conversations aren't really risque. It's just about your body. It's about what to do with your body, how to play safe. And it's not even, you know, that's the thing. People assume that we pluck out these topics off the clouds and think oh today let's talk about yeah let's, these let's are, push these the are boundaries, conversations that, you know? we, that are coming to us we get lots of emails we get lots of questions even from our friends mm -hmm. yes we get lots of only oh, need you know what happened um, this and this happened can you guys talk about that mm -hmm. on the show um, what's the importance of Kegel exercises or I don't understand why my why, my, why I feel this way when uh, I do you know this. like what is you know this? you see I can't even say it on this show because <laughs> yeah. but now on the show I can say what yes. my uh, is you know? <laughs> why it's it's it's, yeah <laughs> <laughs> but what happened out of that publicity with Ezekiel Mutua is the What's Good Networks actually came out to say, no, we didn't produce that show. A few of them were uh, recorded at our studios, but we have no intention of continuing that. Mm. Well, um, <laughs> uh, the production company um, and ourselves were actually in partnership um, in terms of they let us use their facilities. Yes. We weren't in actual partnership. Um, they were nice enough to let us put up our show on their SoundCloud. Yes. But um, about a month or two before the Ezekiel Mutua Facebook post, we had already parted ways. Nini and I and them, them decided that we were no longer going to um, be working together anymore because it wasn't mutually beneficial. And I mean, we were actually we actually chose to walk away from them because we weren't satisfied with their production quality. So um, it's funny. they made it sound like they basically of, ditched you. Of course they did. Yeah. Of course because they have they had to look like the bigger people. I mean, who went running to Ezekiel Mutua's office? It wasn't us right. because we had, we, had nothing, we had nothing to hide. We were using their platform. Yeah. This is so an independent we were not show. In, we, have no we have never had a contract <laughs> with, a, with a production company. We, had no, we have no legal binding. And no, they didn't actually record a few episodes. They recorded all of them. Yeah. I just all wanted the, to the say episodes. all 13 episodes <laughs> that are up were recorded by them. Yeah. <laughs> so, but we chose to walk away from them about two months before the Ezekiel Mutua incident. We were already separated. It's not that because of that incident they dropped us. We had already separated for whatever reasons that we separated. So Nini, were you surprised that your production company, What's Good Networks, went out of their way to look like, you know, this, we don't I, I agree with what they were, the content of their podcast and we have no association with them? Not our production company. It's not... No, no I'm saying not your, your production company for the podcast. That is what I, what it's not company. our production company. The production company that we were working on the production company as a you platform, worked with. Yes. which is, and for us it was about seeing if if there's a way that we can tie into them to promote ourselves as yes. well, mm -hmm. and so that they can, we can have like a mutual beneficial relationship because we are talking about relevant stuff, but they already had a platform that we can very easily come and put our stuff on. Mm. Uh, for me, I was very surprised because I, I don't operate from a point of deception. I don't kiss ass. Okay, I don't say one thing and do another. Mm -hmm. I'm a very candid person. It comes off as being hard-headed, rude, but I, I, I. I do what I say I'm going to do. You speak the truth. I speak the truth. And there's a lot of lies that have come up from this, this entire situation. And for me, it is that I call myself an actor mm -hmm. because I cannot have that kind of performance. I cannot convincingly portray what she portrayed. Mm -hmm. She portrayed something that was completely irrelevant. It was, it was not the point. She, it almost felt like she was afraid of something. Mm -hmm. What I got was a sense of fear. 
Like, what is she hiding? Why is she running there? I didn't run. The podcast is ours. Right. Why did and she it's, run? It's up. It's we weren't ditched. I mean, <laughs> we just decided um, that it was no longer going to air on their yeah. SoundCloud anymore. And now, if people want to listen to the spread, it's on Karen Kaz Lucas's SoundCloud. All right. Fantastic. All 13 episodes. All 13 episodes. Yes. That were recorded there. <laughs> that were <laughs> just to <laughs> make it clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That were recorded there. And we will continue to record. We're not, we haven't stopped and we're not going to stop. Yeah. How did you two come together and decide to do this particular podcast, The Spread? Well, Nini and I have been wanting to work together for a really long time. We've been trying to find whatever, whatever the, top, the topic or the subject or the work that was going to bring us together because we've been friends for a very long time and we just needed to find what, we just, what, what can we do to spread the love. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And um, I came up with the idea to, to have a sex positive podcast because I love to listen to them. I listen, I look for them all over the interwebs. Like I have a, if oh, you yes. want a bunch of <laughs> sex positive podcasts, like on she's any, the one. She's any the one. genre, <laughs> everything from mild to wild. Yeah. <laughs> like, you I got it. it. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I was just like, oh my gosh, I really want to do this because I think it would be beautiful to be able to have something open and candid and a safe space for people to be able to talk about their sexuality because it's such a taboo topic that we can that we can demystify, yeah. we can de-tabooize, exactly. <laughs> you know, sexuality and sex okay. and just have an open platform for people to talk. Why is sex and sexuality still such a taboo subject in Kenya? I don't know why we're so afraid of it. I, that's a, a, something that I don't understand because I don't... Uh, is it, the, is it the, the pleasure that we're afraid of? Is it the orgasm? Is it the love? Is it the companionship. I don't understand why sex is taboo because there's so much that happens before the actual act of penetration. Yeah. And when you're explaining sex to your child, you know, by the time you get to vagina into and penis, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Those th Keep going. Keep okay, going. by the time right. you get into the organs, you've gone through an entire process of what relating is about, what companionship is about, what support is, what intimacy is. Safety. Safety. Mm -hmm. And not just safety physically, but safety for your heart. Right. You have to be able to have conversations with people about how you're going to get into an intimate situation with another person, you know, and, and, and just the, the, the big the bigger conversations yeah. around this one thing that is made so taboo. I mean, the one thing that comes up for me so clearly is like, I, uh, there was a, a, a stupid rule in one of the schools, a six inch rule, where uh, you cannot be approached, you cannot be six inches, who the hell knows what six right. inches is, away uh -huh. from a boy, right. because I don't know, the sperm might impregnate you, I don't know what's <laughs> going to happen. <laughs> but I remember my daughter getting so frustrated because she, had, she has guy friends mm -hmm. and she's a hugger. Mm -hmm. She's a hugger. Mm. Even when she gets to know you, she will hug you. She's yeah. very affectionate. Right. She kept saying, why do they think, mom, why do they keep thinking? I'm thinking about sex. They're the ones who make us want to have sex. I don't want to have sex, mom, I don't want to have sex. That's her response to this bullying that happens around it. Right. So I don't understand this fear because for me, the more aware you are of what your rights are, of how you can keep yourself safe, of how you can be healthy, how you can guard your heart, yet give your heart, because it's about the experience of, of, of one human being co-creating pleasure with another in every aspect. The fear I don't get. You might have to educate us on that. Yeah. Why do you because think it's we, we don't I, I have no idea. Because I, what I wanted to ask you is, I, it, 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 for some people, they think you're just provocateurs who love to be able to... Who are these people who haven't listened to the podcast? Because we're not provoking anything. Right. We're having conversations. Mm. We're having sex-positive conversations. So any person who will call it anything other than that hasn't, hasn't listened, listened to, the show. to the show, has listened to the, 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 the tabloids yeah. or the bloggers or, or, Ezekiel, or, Ezekiel, or Ezekiel Motua, yeah. but has not listened to the show. And I have no problem with judgment and criticism, honestly, mm -hmm. but I have a problem with ignorance, mm -hmm. especially when it comes in front of me. I'm not ignorant. I do not support ignorance. Mm -hmm. I'd quotes by Nini. The other argument <laughs> some people will make is like, no, 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 when you tell them about the sex positive ideas and you give them ideas to have sex. They're going to have the sex. The criticism is you're teaching them how to have sex. You're teaching the youth how to have but sex. But have they listened? I mean, they haven't. No, but you, you, you get that criticism, right? Yeah, but, yeah, but and it would be in anything that we do. It would be in in movies that we were in, in, in you know, where there's kissing, like like the Coca-Cola ad that was banned with yes. a, with a kissing scene. Do yes. you think that makes people want? To, do you think that that it makes people want to kiss or to drink Coke? We like, talked about it on the show <laughs> and what, what the rationale yeah. is for yeah. banning a kissing scene. And Quando like says Mia, people aren't they always kissing? And Quando says Mia was on TV maybe ten years ago. Yeah. yeah. 
Yes, kissing. Yes, kissing. And bold and beautiful kissing. Yes. Yeah. And all of those shows. Mm -hmm. So why is it that a commercial has like it, it makes it makes no sense like what it is that people decide to pick and choose to sh is going to teach our children. I mean, you can't think that our children have their parents who take care of them and who can guide them by themselves. Like people can actually do that for themselves without you trying right. to um, like impose your um, ignorant views on us. You know. This was a sex positive is because you said you're going to keep is, recording. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sex positive show hosted by two no, feminists. No, we're going to keep. We are recording. You're right? recording. We are still recording. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Hosted by two feminists. <laughs> and feminist has become another bad <laughs> word in, within certain circles in Kenya. Like you use feminist as an insult. Have you realized that? Have you noticed no, that? No, this is the first I'm hearing of yeah. it. Yeah, this is the first I'm hearing of it. But I can understand where, where it would come from. I feel that there is, there is a very outrageous fear around um, any especially strong, independent, carefree, mm -hmm. loving, successful, happy women. Yes. You know, it is always tied. It has to be, the attack has to be uh, in the femininity because that is the only way I feel like, like a man can come in and strip a woman. It's always, mm -hmm. it's been done by politicians. It's been, it's even been done with people in political office where they take a woman and they demean her through, her, through sex, mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. content and mm -hmm. conversations about sex. But I always feel like it is, it is the only way that a man can attack a woman. So even if I'm not raping you on the streets, I can rape you with my... On the with, internet. On the internet. I can rape you with what I say. Mm -hmm. I can rape you with my speech. Mm -hmm. But, but at, attacking a woman because in her sexuality has always been the only way mm -hmm. that a man will respond to a woman mm -hmm. violently. Mm -hmm. It's always in the attack. Mm -hmm. So I feel like this is always... Feminism is thrown out in an insulting way. Okay. It's used to describe a woman who has done something wrong. And what is termed wrong and right, of course, is, is, is dependent on very archaic ideas. Um, and for me, it feels like this is where it comes from. It comes from a, way, a, a, a place where men or people don't understand how to deal with a woman who wants to go after what is good for her, what builds her, what develops her. We don't know how to attack, how to what to see. We don't know. We don't know wh how to deal with that kind of woman. And we have an episode about slut, slut shaming. shaming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's episode ten. Ooh, hey. <laughs> Somebody did his homework. <laughs> episode ten is about slut, slut shaming. shaming, and yeah. it actually talks about that. It's it's about bullying, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. cyberbullying. To feel Not good about yourself. Just cyberbullying, but that happens a lot more now because of the age that we're in with the internet. People can hide behind their computers to throw um, slurs at other people to okay. try and demean them. You know, you know about this. Yes, I know about cyberbullying. Absolutely. Yeah. The, con the, co the counter argument, though, is that feminism or some brands of feminism have been very militant mm. and that kind of rubs people off the wrong way. And the, uh, hence why sometimes you, feminism is used as a bad word. Understand understandably so. But then um, the reason that um, feminism has been depicted in this form, this like uh, military form, is because it didn't, it didn't get there. It didn't go from zero to there. It's been gradually building because we women have had to stand up for women's rights stronger and stronger. As it's it's almost like a battle because it's like a waging war um, with the the. It's, I, I don't know how to explain it without like stuttering. Mm -hmm. But the more that you push somebody against the wall, then the more that they're going to become defensive. So it's completely understandable that this militant feminism is is there because um, the more that you <laughs> can you <laughs> answer Nini what is she trying to say I, I just I'm trying to say it without stuttering but I can't it's all right I think we, I don't, we were I don't, heading I don't, there. I don't, I don't I'm just basically saying that it didn't it didn't come from nowhere it yeah. didn't become militant for nothing yeah mm -hmm. it got there because it was rising and rising and rising and the more people pushed and the more avenues that people thought to oppress women or to okay. oppress feminism then of course then the fight against it became militant it was in a reaction to the environment exactly. yes. which was okay exactly. i understand all right let's talk about what you guys have been up to by the way nini i've got a clip first let's play the clip oh and then yes wow. where's Go. the clip <laughs> hang on what, what, what we're going to show here is something from We've been wondering where you've been an actor, casting director, Sense8. Tell us about Sense8 before you even play the clip. Well, Sense8 is the, the most amazing experience. Working with the Wachowskis has been a great um, learning um, experience for me. I was in Berlin earlier on in the year mm -hmm. and training under Carmen Cuba where we did um, shortlisting for 
the Nairobi version of Sense8. And for me, it's been one of the most exciting projects I've worked on. It's been a highly professional. I say Sense8 spoils me. Why is because that? It's it's you the prep time that is that is given to a production like Sense8. Mm -hmm. You understand that when it comes to filming it, why it is as good as it is because there's a lot of preparation that goes into mm -hmm. it. That means that you're constantly working in an environment that's teaching you to be more professional, to be better at what you at what you're doing, to be able to provide a certain you know level of cast as opposed to just a kawaii actor. You have to keep looking for actors who are achieving better and better and better and better. And for those who are not aware, you are casting director for Sense8 Nairobi... Yes. Nairobi Bits. Yes. In one of the eight locations they have. Yes, yes. There's also a sound bite, right? Do we want to play that? Excellent. Run, 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 run. We haven't had you sing. I'm not a... You're talking about Kaz, baby. You're not talking about me. Kaz is a singer. Seriously, Kaz. That, that's Kaz. Mm -hmm. I'm messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh. Yes. And, and she's just following along. <laughs> do you still sing? I do. I sing all the time. Because, so here's the interesting thing. We have had more from you about sex and sex positive conversations than about music. Yeah, because nobody wants to listen to the stuff that's good. Nobody wants to listen to the stuff that's not controversial. Everybody wants to hear all the drama. If, I, if my music was dramatic, then it would be making the headlines. And I'd <laughs> or be if you were dramatic, about if you were getting drunk in the bars and uh, yeah. shouting at waiters. Yeah, then we'd be here yeah, having that discussion. That conversation. My music is not, like, does it make the news? Actually, our work doesn't make the news. Do you understand? Yeah. Like, as we artists. Are, as artists, we don't, it's amazing. We hardly ever get support um, or even congratulations for a yeah. good job or a job well done or, or an amazing, we hardly get that. What we get is a lot of flack and hate and bullying. And yes. it's crazy because when I'm working, I'm not thinking about hatred. Yes. I'm working from a place of love. What I do is creative and it's co-creative. That means it involves people and it is for the pleasure of another person. Mm. But nobody ever takes that pleasure and goes, thank you, Nini. Mm. You get that on the streets with you know, your fans. But when it comes to the, you know, people who should be congratulating you on a, on a job well done. They're not. They're not. Okay. They're calling us other things like sluts and hoes. And <laughs> Will you come back and sing on the show? Sure. Excellent. Fantastic. This has been really great, guys. It's been absolutely amazing. So people can go and listen. Listen to the, the spread, spread on SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Karen Kaz Lucas, that's the page. Yes. All of the episodes are there. All of the, we've currently uploaded all the episodes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. And we are going to be recording our second thirteen Season. episodes. Yeah. So that's going to be on the page as well. That's going to yes. be on the page. I love it. Keep, Keep listening. And if you have honestly, if you have questions, those guys are so open to having conversations about sex, sexuality, yeah. sexual health. If you're confused. Mm -hmm. If and we keep everybody anonymous, so you can you can send us an email at thespreadkenya at gmail.com. Yeah. Excellent. Keep fighting the good fight. Thank you, Larry. Thank Hard you as so it much. may be. Yeah. No pun. It's fun. No pun. Oh, <laughs> oh, I didn't even see that. <laughs> oh, wow. Kaz and Nini, thank you so much for coming on.